I want to take you back to 2012. It was the summer before my freshman year of high school at Loyola Academy in Wilmette, Illinois. That August, I experienced a traumatic event that imposed long-term effects on all aspects of my life. Initially, I ignored and distanced myself from others and from my own emotions, as this was the only coping mechanism I knew how to use at the time. The encouragement from my family to seek medical attention made me realize that I could not avoid my issues any longer. I was diagnosed with a few medical conditions, and with that came a long journey of treatment and recovery during high school and beyond. At Loyola, I was surrounded by high-performing students, all with big Ivy League-type plans for their futures. Now, most people would think that being in this environment would motivate me to also excel in my academics, but I had the opposite experience. I endlessly compared my performance to that of my peers. I set unrealistic expectations for myself and always fell short of them. From grade school up till college, I hadn't fully developed a learning style that worked for me. The way the core courses were taught just never clicked. I performed poorly in math and science specifically. My poor grades in these subjects convinced me that I wouldn't excel in careers relating to math or science. At that time, I didn't realize how this affected the lives of other students as well. In 2012, a research team composed of PhD candidates and postdoctoral scholars at the University of Chicago found that a high degree of math anxiety undermined performance of otherwise successful students, placing them almost half a school year behind their less anxious peers. It is my belief that the grades you, your child, or your students receive do not define your capability or potential. I have learned this throughout my current path towards earning a bachelor's degree in computer science. Engineering has a spot for anyone. My story is proof of that. When it came time to apply for college, as an 18-year-old, I cared a lot about what others thought of me. Since both students and faculty frowned upon the options of either going to a community college or not going to college, I applied to a few universities simply because that's what everyone else was doing. After graduating high school in 2016, I went on to attend Loyola University in Chicago without the slightest idea about what I wanted to study. I felt extremely lost and uncertain about my future. During the first month of college, I was an undecided major. I was unable to keep up my attendance and grades. I made the difficult decision to withdraw from school as my mental health became my most important priority. After dropping out of college, I began to believe that I would never amount to anything. Then a close family friend introduced me to a program with the hope that it could help me the way that it had helped her. Desperate and emotionally exhausted, I agreed. Upon starting my restorative journey, I had to let go of the beliefs that I once held about myself so that I could adopt a mindset of growth. Reconciling with my past, I learned to take responsibility for my actions. I strive to learn and understand who I was, am, and wanted to be while acquiring tools to manage and cope with my life proactively. Becoming involved with this program ultimately changed my life, a life that is now abundant and promising. After a year dedicated to bettering myself, I felt comfortable and ready to start a new path here at Wilbur Wright, one of the seven community colleges in Chicago in the fall of 2017. My initial performance in my general education classes at Wright, however, seemed to validate my old belief that I had no future because of my poor grades. While I struggled to find ways to improve my scores, I felt like I was capable of better. After my first two semesters, I sought out my academic advisor, Yolanda Martinez. The first time I met with her, I arrived with tears running down my face because I still had no clue what I was doing or which classes I wanted to take. Yolanda asked me what I was interested in at the time, and I said something random, like, I don't know, maybe technology, as I continued to wipe away tears from my cheeks. She then provided me with tissues, as well as information about different paths I could take while at Wright, and suggested that I look further into careers in technology as this was a promising career path. While researching, I stumbled upon a website called Codecademy, which is a platform that offers free online coding classes. Instead of staying up to watch my favorite Netflix shows, I found myself completing lesson after lesson on Codecademy. For the first time in my life, I felt a sense of direction. Consumed by coding, I eagerly taught myself the basics of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Eventually, I began building projects on my own. 
the logic of programming synced perfectly with the way I think and analyze problems. My newfound passion sparked a motivation inside of me I didn't know was there. Coding gave me hope, empowerment, and an idea of what my future could look like. Driven to further explore programming, I enrolled in a six-month coding bootcamp and graduated with a full-stack developer certification from Northwestern University while attending Wright part-time and holding a full-time job. I was the youngest student in my cohort and was intimidated by that at first, but I knew that engaging in my old self-destructive behavior of comparing myself to others would be unhelpful, so I focused on improving my own skills. After building and deploying the first couple projects, as well as assisting my classmates when they asked me for help, I began to gain confidence in my programming capabilities. Throughout the boot camp, I was immensely inspired by my instructor, who is also my current mentor, Mark Thompson, and his story of resilience and hope. He grew up on the south side of Chicago, supported by public housing and welfare, and was one of 13 people living in his home. Like many kids in similar situations, education and schooling were seen as a way out, but his academic performance was just average. Scoring only a 19 on the ACT exam, he used work ethic to make up the difference and excel. One year in his college education, his mother died, and he had to become the legal guardian for three of his younger siblings. He learned to balance all his responsibilities, supporting his siblings, working two jobs, and completing his undergraduate education. After graduating, he received a fellowship for graduate school where he went on to complete his master's in computer science. He now has a successful career in technology and works for a top tech company. Again, inspired by Mark's story, after completing the boot camp, I decided my new goal would be to work towards earning a bachelor's degree in computer science. Now the journey wasn't always easy, especially in the beginning. As a woman, I had the same experience in every CS class that I took at Wright. The first thing I did when I walked into the room was scan the male-dominated crowd for another female. With the pressure of being the only or one of the few women in these classes, it felt like I had to continuously prove myself and my capabilities. This was a discouraging experience because I felt alone and unwelcomed at times. As I pushed myself to exceed the expectations that others placed on me, I began to outperform my male classmates. These occurrences led me to hold myself to a higher standard and in turn made me realize that I am more than capable of succeeding at writing code as well as understanding computer science concepts. If someone told me four years ago that my life would look like it does today, I never would have believed them because I used to be exactly the opposite of the person standing here today. Last fall, I started a subsection within my IT club where I led a virtual meeting every Friday focused on Amazon Web Services DeepRacer which is an integrated learning system for users of all levels to learn and explore reinforcement learning and build autonomous driving applications. I guided the group in training, evaluating, and tuning the reinforcement learning models in an online simulator. In addition to my classes, I also volunteered to participate in a beta cybersecurity course at Wright to expand my knowledge about different career sectors. As a class, we participated in the National Cyber League competition. Of the Midwest universities, our team placed 29th out of 50. This was not only an accomplishment, but a testament to each of our desires to succeed and grow our skills. In December of 2020, my previous C++ professor, Gustavo Alata, asked me to be a co-moderator in a virtual panel focused on women and minorities in tech. That experience and the positive feedback I received ignited a passion to tackle inequalities in STEM fields. I will do whatever I can to be a part of a future where women don't have to try so hard to find someone else who looks like them in their CS classes. A future where they don't have to try so hard to earn the respect of their fellow classmates. A future where they feel more a part of and less alone. That future begins with me contributing my part to create a culture of inclusivity and openness. That future starts with me being a voice, role model, and mentor for other women trying to navigate a future in STEM. I am determined to enter the field of computer science because with the CS degree, I will explore the dynamics between technology and society. I aspire to become a strategic engineer with a critical conscience and an awareness of the complex societal issues that technology can help address. Thanks to the support from Professor Alata and Wright College, 
In October of 2020, I began an apprenticeship working as a software engineering associate at Accenture and am on track to receive an offer for full-time employment. Next week, I will be moving to Eugene, Oregon to attend the University of Oregon and pursue my dream of completing my bachelor's degree in computer science. Within my last three semesters at Wright, I was able to move my GPA up from a 2.7 to a 3.2 on a 4.0 scale. My worst subjects in school became my best. With self-development at the center of my core, I am determined to go beyond the limits I set for myself. I now realize more than ever that the scores I received throughout grade school and high school were not a reflection of my potential in life. Because what those grades failed to depict was my capability to one day rise above the expectations defined for me, not by me. I am living proof that engineering has a spot for anyone. Whether someone is in the top 10% of their class, the bottom 10%, or anywhere in between. Whether someone takes a traditional or a non-traditional path, they can still become an engineer. There isn't just one type of person fit for engineering. The most important things are to not give up on yourself, as well as surround yourself with people who believe in you. While you continue with your day, remember that you can evolve and become great at something you once thought was difficult. Or as Helen Hayes said, the expert in anything was once a beginner.